Good morning. Good morning. I was so mesmerized with what was going on back here that I almost <laughs> forgot that I was supposed to get up. <laughs> My name is Elaine Tell, but the reason that you are seeing me this morning is because it's Wells Fest time again, and I am the chair of the silent auction. So um, that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Now, those of you that have been around for a while could probably do this for me, or we could do it as call and response. That's how familiar you are with this pitch. But I only know one way to do it, so here we go. Uh, the silent auction is actually the number two uh, revenue generator at the Wells Fest event because it has almost no overhead. Everything that is donated is, is strictly uh, for the beneficiary. There's no hold back, there's no expense involved other than those of us that run down the road and burn a little bit of gas. But um, the donors that we have that are businesses would not stock that tent were it not that not only does the Wells Fest committee go out and gather, but I'm deputizing all of you as committee members. If you have somebody that you do business with on a regular basis, if you reach out to them, they are more likely to give to you than they are somebody just calling them on the phone because you have a personal relationship with them. Um, I'm one of those people that nobody goes untapped. My nail tech gives, my hairdresser gives, my dentist gives a gift certificate for a cleaning and a checkup. Nobody goes unscathed. Also, I learned a few years ago from personal experience I used to get gifts that there was nothing wrong with them. They were perfectly fine, but they just weren't something I was ever going to use. So I would stash them on a closet shelf, and that was my regifting shelf. And that worked out real well until one year I gave the person something that they had given to me a couple of years prior, <laughs> and they called me on it. So at that point, I thought, you know what? That would be a real good thing to give to a silent auction. So I know now at Christmas, if my sister-in-law gets my name, I'm going to have something to give to the silent auction. <laughs> so, you know, there's that source, too. Now, I, there's something that we need to keep in mind. This is new merchandise, okay? This doesn't mean, you know, and I don't mean to be rude, but this doesn't mean that you go and start cleaning out, you know, stuff that you've had laying around that's been used. A silent auction is new merchandise. Okay, um, if it's something that plugs in, it needs to be in the original packaging, it needs to have the warranty card and all of the owner's manuals with it. So that's the only, you know, thing that's different is that particular thing. So, you know, kind of look around, see if you've got some of those things or if you bought something for yourself that you know you're never going to use. Those are perfect items. So um, that's what I'm up to this year, and now the call, the call to worship will happen. Thank you. Please stand as we share the opening sentences. The difference between faith as theory and faith as practice is huge. It's clear that choosing a new life comes with specific and worthwhile responsibilities. 
we share the prayer. We want to make your spirit glad, dear Lord, because in your kind of living, we get glad, and so will many others in Christ. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing all verses of hymn number 170, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Is this close enough? <laughs> let's, affirm, let's affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, Ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We were sharing just last week how the whole idea of free worship came into being. I served a little church on the coast, and one Sunday, I'd only been there about a couple of weeks, and I came into the 11 o'clock service, and it was my turn, and I got up and I said, good morning, and nobody said anything. And I said, well, good morning, and a couple of folks looked at me strange, and strangely, and they said, well, good morning. I said, what would you like to do now? And everybody looked at everybody else, and Calvin Switzer was always outspoken, and so Calvin said out loud, that's what we pay you for. <laughs> I said, listen to me. I said, you come to church every week, we tell you when to stand, when to sit, we tell you what to sing, we tell you what verse to sing, we tell you when to pray, when not to pray. I said, great guns, we even tell you when to give, you know, if you wanna. And I said, I'd just like to know if there's anything you'd like to do today. A little lady held her hand up and she said, I'd like for them to sing my songs. She said, I come to church. She said, I walk four miles. Talk about getting judgment on you, huh? She got rides after that. But she said, but you never sing my song. And I said, Miss Mary, what is it? And she said, I come to the garden alone. And we said, and he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And 
that's how free worship was born. And so here it is, it's your chance right now, only one person. What would you like for us to sing for you? What is your favorite song? Lift your hand and if we know it, we're gonna do a verse of it for you right now. Anybody ready? I'm looking around. Everybody's looking at everybody else. Okay, Jan. Okay, what a fellowship, what a joy to find. What number is that? Look at on the back of the book. What a fellowship, what a joy. I think it's 322, I'm not sure. What a joy. 133. See, I was just off a little, 133. Okay, one verse, here we go. Now let's do it. just pray. <laughs> Lord, we want to make you glad sometimes. Often the way we live makes you sad, and we're sorry about it. Sometimes the way we live makes you sad, and we're certainly sorry about that. At the same time, thank you very much for the chance to change. Thank you very much for amazing grace, and thank you that it's not just a song to be sung, but an experience of our very own, and we pray that we might have it not just once, but every single time we need it, because that's your intention. Bless you, God. We thank you for the chance to be a part of the church. We're certainly not the whole body of Christ, but we pray that we might be one faithful part. And we thank you for the active life of this congregation, not only when we worship, but during the days of the week and the months of the year and the years that have passed. Thank you, God, for the chance you gave us to do Wells Fest for the good of others for more years than your dear son Jesus lived on earth. Thank you for the chance each one of us have to make things right with you and with each other and with our own selves. We pray that our living, that our Christian life, that our testimony might make you glad and us glad too. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to share this one together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. We Okay, please stand as we sing all verses of number 175, Jesus, the very thought of thee.
Please remain standing as we share Psalm 139, 1 through 6, found on page 854 of the hymnal. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path, my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. You know four words is on my tongue, O Lord. You know it all together. You, you pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. Take a moment now and greet each other with the peace and love of Christ. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you here this morning. Thank you for greeting each other with the peace and love of Christ. Let's take a couple of moments and look at the life of our church. If you want to look on the inside cover of your bulletin, our altar flowers were placed today by Lacey Thomas and Carolyn Thomas in memory of Rita and Harry Thomas, uh, their anniversary. The Furnace family offers Thanks to those who uh, gave a gift or went to help with after flood rebuilding. We have a service of communion uh, during the service today. Um, the altar is open to us all. Thank God. And uh, we come by grace and grace alone. Please don't let anything stand in the way of you coming to the altar this morning. The, uh, because we come to the altar this morning, um, our service sometimes takes a little longer than usual. Um, just keep in mind that we usually don't mind when a football game goes into overtime. We might even enjoy it. So um, just uh, take a deep breath and uh, be thankful for the additional time we get to spend together. Our Tuesday morning ministries uh, is continues to be in need of canned goods. This is a wonderful family activity. They can use money too to purchase goods. Um, but we especially encourage you to go to the store and engage in the physical act of pulling things off the shelf, putting them in the cart, and paying for them. It's a, it's a, a wonderful learning, learning opportunity for kids to, to demonstrate the, what's involved in the act of giving. Uh, the Wells Fest Golf Tournament is coming up. Um, it's going to be on the 15th of this month at Live Oaks Golf Club on Highway 49 near Pocahontas. It's a four-person scramble tournament. 
It's a one o'clock shotgun start. I don't understand all this lingo, but uh, if you have a question about it, John. Oh, okay, yeah. If you have questions, um, contact John. He'll tell you all about it. Um, we are in six pack Sunday mode. Please, when you go to the store to buy food for your own household, pick up some uh, six packs of name brand soft drinks and uh, bottles of water and bring them here. You can deposit them downstairs and they'll be sold at Wells Fest to help raise money for the beneficiary. I want to mention that the, the month of September is designated as Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Um, suicide is one of those things that we don't like to think about and we sort of avoid uh, thinking about it at all costs and it's certainly not something that we talk about. But uh, this is an opportunity this month to, to think about that. Suicide is not common, but there are subgroups that have higher rates, and those include people who are uh, in their 20s or teenagers, people who are over 65, especially men, people with chronic pain, um, people with alcohol and drug problems. Um, all of us have people in our families and in the circle of our friends who fall in those categories. What I would encourage you to do, and you can do this either by pulling out your phone or taking a pew card, is to write down the the uh, national hotline number and to keep it in your phone. Not necessarily for your own use, although that would be good, but for, to have it on hand. If you have a friend who expresses some kind of need or who um, you have concerns about. So let me just tell you the number. Please write this down. This is the National Suicide Hotline. It's 800-784- 2433. When you call that number, the first thing they ask you is if you're a veteran. If you are, you punch one, and there's a separate section of that that's for military veterans. Yeah, it's 800 784 2433. I'd also like to tell you a website, and, and I'll, I'll see about getting this link maybe put on our. On our um, our own webpage for the month. The National Alliance for Mental Illness, NAMI, um, has information about Suicide Awareness Prevention Month on their website. So their website is www.nami.org. They have good information there and they have their own links and so on. Are there other announcements this morning? Anyone has? Yes, Ashley. power.
cats wouldn't want to come anyway. <laughs> Are there other announcements this morning? It is hot. Just want to remind everybody that we have a series of classes and fellowship and dinner on Wednesday nights at 6.30. There's uh, youth classes, children uh, classes and activities. Uh, Keith holds a class. And uh, we also, I'm helping to facilitate a class called Living the Question. So please do come out. We just started that this last week. So jump on board real quick. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Yes, Elaine. prayer requests this morning. Do we have any prayer requests? Yes? I have two. Uh, Natalie Woodwall, not sure everybody knows her, is having surgery Thursday. I think I have this right, but it's hamstring. And that she was dancing right earlier about what was going on. So she's having surgery Thursday. So I told you that her mama gave in. So I told her I'd have some prayers. And just a very quick prayer for my kids and for my daughter. She drove back to North Carolina yesterday and was divinely protected from literally being killed in Atlanta. It just was Yes. Yes. Um, my stepmother's brother, I guess my step uncle Mike, is um, in, the night has a cancer. He's out for the month, and month is very intensive uh, chemotherapy. So. Okay. Deb. Um, a prayer of Thanksgiving and, and probably most of us for our son Zach, who is um, <laughs> going through semester abroad in the UK. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit of a Anthony. Yes, Peggy. For my husband, for the next ten years of his family to be okay. Yes. Probably may or might pass away, so no fast food for my boy. Are there any others? Yes. Please go to our uh, okay. Yeah, Nicholas. Okay. All right. Let's bow our heads. I'm going to close this prayer with with a. Um, somewhat amazing a prayer from, from our hymnal, a new age prayer that, uh, of praise that was written in the 13th century. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we come to you and our hearts are both glad for all your gifts and heavy with the concerns of ourselves and our loved ones. Lord, we lift up the concerns to you. We thank you for your care, for your love, and we offer our thanks and praise as well. Please, Lord, help us face the things that are before us. Let us be both generous and wise in how we live our lives. We thank you for the friendships and love that you have brought into our lives. We thank you for this fellowship and the guidance and strength that it gives us as we attempt to live in this world. O oh, burning mountain, O oh, chosen sun, O oh, perfect moon, O oh, fathomless well, O oh, unattainable height, O oh, clearness beyond measure, O oh, wisdom without end, O oh, mercy without limit, O oh, strength beyond resistance, O oh, crown beyond all majesty, the humblest thing you created sings your praise.
How about birthdays and anniversaries? <coughs> yes, Elaine. Yes. Um, my niece has a birthday on the eighth. Um, she's coming on our marriage on the twenty eighth year of us through that time. Okay. Oh, Would you like to come to the altar? Sure. Okay, we'll do that in just a moment after we sing. Yes. Okay. Grandson birthday. And the way back. Um, yes. A very happy birthday <coughs> to my son and grandson. Okay. Are there any others? Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, right. wow. Let's sing happy birthday together. Happy birthday to you. y'all notice the way they looked at each other, the way to see who was going to start the happy birthday. As Glenda and Keith come, if anyone feels led to come, please do it. Let's be the time. Let's have a little prayer. Thank you so much, God, for the chance to take just a moment during worship to celebrate life and love and 28 years here for Glenda and Keith. We thank you very much for the miracle of love, for the wonder of it, for the chance to keep it going when the mountaintop is bright and when the day is long and dark. And we thank you very much for how their love has been translated into service for others too, into reaching out to embrace those in need of all kinds. It's a beautiful thing when love reaches beyond itself in service. And so hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God, we offer blessings and peace. We offer blessings and peace to the Ferguson family, to the Ferguson family, kneeling at the altar, kneeling at the altar, and Jamie far away. And Jamie far away. We offer this prayer, we offer this prayer with thanks and our love. With thanks and our love. In Christ. In Christ. Amen. Ask our ushers to please come forward for tithes and offerings. open our hearts so that they need not be without succor. Let us not be afraid to defend the weak because of the anger of the strong, nor afraid to defend the poor because of the anger of the rich. Show us where love and hope and faith are needed and use us to bring them to those places. And so open our eyes and our ears that we may this coming day be able to do some good work of peace for thee. And we take now this opportunity, Lord, to give some back of what you've given to us to serve your needs. In Jesus' name.
going to work well or not. Interesting how God puts things together. Because what I want to preach on today is probably simple to the point of being insulting for some of you. But it's this. Hadn't thought about it. Our lives either make God glad or sad. 
and the way we live our lives either make each other glad or sad. And that's kind of big. About three weeks ago, after communion, a guy came up and said, you really messed me up. I said, oh, I'm sorry, what did I do this time? He said, well, it really wasn't you, it was Jesus. I said, oh, Jesus messed you up, right? He said, yeah, you said that thing about communion. I said, what? He said, you know, you said communion is taking Jesus inside you. And he said, and so I did it. And all of a sudden, I began to think some Jesus stuff and feel some Jesus stuff. And it dawned on me that I'm supposed to live some Jesus stuff. Now, there's a lot of Jesus talk, but there's not a whole lot of Jesus living. There's not a lot of Jesus practically understood because one has taken Christ in and become a Christian. And so you don't need to look at it all because we're going to do the scripture a little differently this morning, but you can if you want to. It's from Ephesians 4. It's on the back of the bulletin. We're part of the same body, it says. You realize that there was a time that we were not a people, and we are one now. You didn't come here, and you came here for whatever reason. Some people came here because they wanted to. Some people came here because some relative dragged them or some friend invited them. And we're a unique people. We're some real well and some real sick folks. We're some people pretty well along the way. And we're some people that are just beginning. We're a church that actually has a conversation during worship. Sometimes back and forth from chancel to pew. Sometimes just with one another. Any number of illustrations, but there was a young lady in our church years ago with severe emotional difficulties. And we would pick her up in the middle of the night walking down Bailey Avenue in a slip. Any number of things, and one day when Tracy was very young, Anthony was just about 16 or 17, she was right up there in the balcony. And she was screaming and hollering and saying that she was going to jump. It was not during worship, <laughs> but could have been. And. Uh, so we came in there, and Tracy was in Anthony's arms, and she yelled, I'm going to jump, and I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to finish it now. And so Anthony said, I won't quote it exactly, son. This is the revised standard version. <laughs> jump, darn you. <laughs> We're sick and tired of your being sick, and we want you to be well. And I went up there in the balcony, and I literally, she hasn't, wearing a pair of blue jeans, took her by the arm, and she fell back on the floor. And I said to her, Ann, it's time for you to be well now. Sick is done. In the name of God, I'm saying get well. Several weeks went by, and they were moving out of the area, and she got up and stood right here. Some of you are here. And she said, you know, I never had a family. I never had a people. I hear you all talk about that stuff until now. And she said, I'll be moving the rest of my life. She travels as a, an accountant. And she said, but my family residence is Wells. And my address is 2019 Bailey Avenue, Jackson, Mississippi. We still hear from her. And she's doing well. Once we want a people. We had a guy who come running down the aisle saying to me he wanted some peanut butter. <laughs> and I had to tell this story earlier, I'll tell it again. He insulted Miss Lou, who was our secretary at that time, Lou Elamore. And he was really sick. Uh, sometimes he thought he was Jesus, sometimes he thought he was Mohammed, some, you know. And sometimes he was all the ones at the same time. And uh, so he came up and he scared the tar out of Lou Elamore, which was hard to do. This little lady didn't scare her easy. And so he came back, and boy, I lit into it. I said, I believe, don't you ever, no, you know, all kind of, and I said, and another thing, too. He said, ooh, I've never seen you like this, preacher, you know. And he said, I'm going. I'm out of here. So he left about 15, 20 minutes later, knock on the back door. There's Ivy Lee with a six-pack of Bud for me. He said, man, you're mad. He said, I just wanted to help you get feeling better. <laughs> uh, 
And I said, I hate to tell you this, I believe, but I don't drink. And he said, what? You don't drink Bud? He said, everybody drinks Bud. I said, well, <laughs> he said, I'll be back. And he came back later with a six pack of Pepsi, wasn't it, son? Yeah, huh? No, Barks Root Beer, yeah, Barks, Barks Root Beer. We kept that for years. Anyway, time passed. We didn't hear anything, and then we got a note. I'd gone off to preach, and I'd come back, and somebody said, I really died. Didn't have a funeral. They said, did one of those paupers burial things. And so I tried to contact the different funeral homes, and finally got a hold of People's Funeral Home. They said, yeah. Um, they stuck him somewhere out. Well, just a minute, we'll see. And I said, no, you don't need to. And I said to the church the next week, I said, hey, we're going to have a funeral service for Ivy Lee. They knew him. And only about eight came on a Saturday morning, right out there where that building is. Uh, there was a scout hut, and he had helped build some little brick garden there. And so we had a little service there, and eight walls folks here, and here comes an old broken down Chevy. And uh, stops, and a young man dressed up, I mean fine. He gets out and he goes and opens the door and this woman gets up, hat and all this kind of stuff. And out of the back comes a lovely, well-dressed young woman. And they walk over toward us and the young man says, I'm Ivory's son. And this is mom. And this is sister. And said, you know, he ain't never had a family until y'all gave him peanut butter. Until you loved him. Once we want a people. But by God and in the grace of Christ, we have received mercy and we have become a people. And when that happens, one of the first things we do is stop lying to one another. <laughs> you see it right there? Stop lying and start telling the truth. One interesting thing about Mark Twain, he said, you know what's bad about lying? You've never experienced this, but I have. <laughs> he said, you have to have such a good memory. <laughs> you been there? Don't get so angry that you sin and don't let the sun go down on your anger. I remember one night I thought uh, my dear Pat was mistreating the kids. I can't even remember which one I thought she was mad at. And I said to her, I said, uh, I'd just show her. I went and I got in the bed and turned to my side and said, good night. And that wasn't my usual way. And she didn't say anything. So in the morning when I got up, I said, why were you so mad with so-and-so? She said, what you talking about? And I just sort of told her what I thought. And she said, oh, honey, how can I tell you this? I said, just tell me. She said, well, it's my time of the month. <laughs> I said, excuse me. think the Bible's not practical? It says don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't go to bed angry. I'm telling you, listen, you hold on to anger and you suffer. You keep holding on to anger and you die. Yeah, okay. Don't give the devil a chance. I won't take long on that one, but I got to tell you. <laughs> Yesterday we went to Wesley's wife's mama's funeral. Auntie and I, that's why we couldn't go with the team down to Baton Rouge to help. And I have a lovely little note here from them saying thank you so much for your hospitality and love and for caring for us. And they had a whole bunch of preachers preach. It was quite a deal. And uh, really a true celebration. But one of the little preachers got up and he said something I hadn't heard in a long time and one thing I never heard. And what he said was this. He said, you know, there is such a thing as heaven and there is such a thing as hell. You don't hear much about it. He said, but you're heading for one or the other one. <laughs> and he said, you know what, I'll, I'll always tell the devil. I'm sorry, we have a few young people here, but they can handle this. He said, what I tell the devil is to go to hell. <laughs> I never heard that before, you? And I don't know what your theology is, but I can tell you this. There are times and places when you need to say, I don't know everything about evil, but I know it exists, and I wish that evil would just go to hell. It's time for violence to be down and kindness to be up. If you're a thief, quit stealing, be honest, and do hard work so you'll have something to give back. <laughs> they stole our son-in-law's truck out of our driveway last week. We had it recovered. They haven't picked it up yet as far as we know, but it's recovered somewhere. You know the bad thing about that? The bad thing about that is there's no stability in a society if you don't know what belonged to who. And I've found a lot of people who are thieves get real upset if somebody steals from them. 
but they don't mind stealing from somebody else. And not only that, but there's a positive point to this whole thing. Get over the stealing stuff so you can give something to somebody. And I, we've seen it. We've seen people, you know. Uh, we blessed Keith Ferguson this morning and dear Glenda. And Kim Ingram, the guy that helped him get his life together and all that kind of stuff, had a reputation. And some of that reputation included some stealing stuff. But when Christ got into his life, that changed. He got over it. And instead of taking, he gave. And that's the way it is with everybody who finds this making God glad stuff really real. Uh-oh, listen to this. Stop all that silly talk. Say the right thing at the right time and help others by what you say. Now, I don't always do this, but Elaine, you're sitting right there. You got the bulls. And I want you to read that dark stuff. See the little dark block there? Read that out loud for us there. See the dark? Can you read it okay? Okay. Yeah, beautiful, huh? One of the kids said the other day, I wrote about this in one of the posts, said, when did we start having so much dirty talk in movies? On the radio and all the kind of stuff. When do we have so much dirty talk between ourselves? When did girls learn to cuss better than boys? <laughs> <laughs> or just as well? And I'm not saying you go to heaven or you go to hell based on whether you cuss or not. I don't. I'm just saying that there is a certain kind of testimony we present in the language we use. Language is a powerful tool. <coughs> and we need to be real careful about it. Because if you use the language of kindness and inclusiveness, of thoughtfulness and all, that's one thing. And if you use um, divisive, uh, well, we've seen a lot of that in politics, huh? Uh, Mean-spirited, bad language, bad stuff. Then finally, don't make God's spirit sad. The spirit makes you sure that someday you're going to be free from your sins. So stop being bitter and angry and mad at others and don't yell at one another or curse each other or ever be rude. Instead, be kind and merciful. I prefer the old translation there, tender-hearted. Be kind and tenderhearted. And forgive one another just as God forgave you. I should wish I could get that into my own set of relationships all the time. Always kind, tenderhearted, and merciful. Always forgiving one another because I have been so beautifully and wonderfully forgiven. Dave Ramsey used to always say, I haven't heard his radio program in a long time, but He's one of these financial gurus, y'all know. When people say, how you doing? Better than I deserve. You know what? That's your story. That's my story. That's our story as men and women of faith. Every single one of us. Better than we believe. So, I'm done, except for this. Did you really ever stop thinking? I'm serious. That our life either makes God glad or sad. And that the way we live either makes each other glad or sad. I'm for glad. And I'm for kind, tender-hearted, forgiving living. Let's be about the Father's business. And in the next few moments, we will take the Christ into us who becomes the prompter of our being able to live that way. Amen. Turn to page 12, please. In your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another. And so, therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not always loved wholeheartedly. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your commandments. We have, we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. You know, dear brothers and sisters, hear this good news. Christ died for our sins while we were still yet sinners. Mercy. That proves God's love toward us, and so, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please turn your eyes to the right and the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, Declared, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Let's sing. Let us break bread. This is such a holy and sacred moment that I don't want to disturb it with humor, but I think that makes God glad anyway. I was teaching that song to the young people down on the red rug several years ago, and what I taught them was, when I fall on my face with my knees to the rising sun, what I said was, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, and one of the kids said, that would be a very peculiar posture, wouldn't it be? Let's pray for a moment. Dear Lord, now, the consecration and the coming. Thank you so much. Amen. On the night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my very self, broken and given for you. When the meal was over, he took the cup, and he blessed it as well. And he said, all of you drink from this. It's the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Think of it. He was at the table looking at the disciples, remembering you and me on this Sunday morning in September. Shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. We are going to observe our first Sunday communion which is to invite you to come when you feel led, and then to receive, dip the cup, and then stay at the altar for a moment where we hold hands and dismiss each altar. Uh, John and I will be serving. Uh, We'll ask Elaine, and Sherry, would you mind? I'd like for you to join me on this side, too. As soon as we're in place, you all come ahead. If you and Elaine, John will take that side. Please come, brothers and sisters.
out and take hands, dear friends, please. My dear Father, we kneel down with great thanksgiving because we are the recipients not only of a new family, but also of a grace that's so amazing that it makes us brand new on the inside. Arise and go in peace and in that grace. Amen. Gracious God, how do we say thanks for the many, many wonderful things that you've done? The only way we can say it is to God be the glory for the things that he has done. In the name of Christ, amen. Just let me reach out and take a hand while Sherry prays us up. Oh, Father God, as we go through our labor day holidays this week, please watch over all of us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. With his but I think it pleases you that I try. In Jesus' name, amen.
reach out and take a hand and let's pray. Our Father, you know it's a mean old world, sometimes divided up into all kinds of pieces. But here we are, red and yellow, black and white, up and down and all around, holding on to one another in your name and receiving into ourselves your grace. It can make a difference, God. Let it do just that. Beloved, arise and go in the grace of Christ and walk and talk it in Jesus' name. Amen. good enough the first time, then do it again. So be sure you get the model. I don't think we have to do it again. You were powerful. Let's take hands and go.